We now have a website that shows three hard-coded products. In this part you will learn how to store these products in a database. There are a couple of things you probably have noticed in the project. The first thing is the file db.sqlite3. This file was created when the project started the first time. The name of the file is defined in settings.py. But what is it? The file is a SQLite database that can be used with Django. And what is in this database? Right now, there is nothing in the database. If you check the file size, you will see it is 0 bytes. A Django database typically stores two kinds of information. First, there is all the data that is needed by the views. Think of products, prices and categories. And second, there will be some super user information. A super user is an administrator who can manage the database. Have you noticed this message each time when the server was started? Django informs us there are 18 unapplied migrations. Migrations are changes to the database structure. I will tell more about this later. First you need to understand that these initial migrations are needed for the admin module. So let's do what Django suggests and migrate. I quit the server. I type the migrate command. Django applied the changes to the database and if you run the web server again, the migration message is gone. We are now ready to create a super user to log in. I quit the server and type in the create super user command. I enter username admin. I do not enter an email. The password will also be admin. Django complains about the password, but I enter Y to proceed. The super user was created. I start the web server again. And open the admin module. I enter the username and password. And now I'm in the Django administration module. This is the place where you can manage the data of your website. At this moment you can manage groups and users. Now we will add the products to the database. For this we need the next topic. Models. A product has a name and price. Here you see a product class to hold that information. In Django these data classes are called models. Models are the core of the system. They describe the data in the website. Models allow us to retrieve data from the database. Even the database structure can be updated based on the models. At this moment there is no product model and no product table in the database. So let's create a model, update the database structure and allow managing products in the administration module. I open models.py. As you see the shop app does not have any models. I'll add the product model. Models inherit from models.model. Now I add the name and price attributes. Name is a string with max length 30 and price is a floating point number. The model is ready and the database structure can be updated. I quit the server. To make the database changes, migrations have to be created. Here is the command to do that.
The migration will create a product table. Now the migration will be applied with the following command. The migrations have been applied. The database now contains a product table and we can add it to the administration module. We do this in admin.py in the shop application. Models can be registered to show up in the administration module like this. I'm ready to run the server and check the changes in the admin module. When I reload the page, the product table shows up. Let me add a product. The product table has one item. Passata di Pomodori. But I do not see the name in the list. The admin module allows us to implement Dando String to show different information, like this. I reload the browser. Now the product list shows name and ID. Perhaps you have wondered where the ID comes from. Classes that inherit from model get a primary key which is named ID. So each model will have an ID. By returning it in Dundo string, it shows up in the list here. Georgie wants to add more products and checks his email. Mr. Gennaro has sent a list of four products that need to be shown on the first version of the website. This is a good moment to test if everything works on your computer. Make sure all your code is up to date and your product list contains the four products you see on the screen. Pause the video and resume when you're done. The list with products now contains four products. Now you learn how to show them in the website. Remember that the view returned three hard-coded products. Let's see how it looked in the browser. I am still in the admin module and click View Site. You see the hard-coded products. I open indexview.py. The first thing I need to do is import product. Now I load the products from the database. Let me loop through products to see what we've got here. I reload the browser and switch to the terminal. You see the list of four products. I'll use a list comprehension to transform them into a dictionary. The list of products is now transformed to a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary has a name and price. I reload the browser. Very nice! The page now shows the products from the database. Georgie goes to Mr. Gennaro to show him the result on his laptop. Mr. Gennaro is very happy and decides to use this as a first version on the internet. Mr. Gennaro only has one request. Can the prices be formatted like this? In the next part, you see how to format the price.